today we're going to start a new series. We're calling it Reset. And we're focusing during this period of time on reset on this word kadash, which means holy, set aside, not common. That God has a purpose for our lives, and in order for us to reach that purpose, we're going to have to live in a way that is holy, Amen. set aside, and not common. And that may be not the, the best topic for the first Sunday, but it's the topic I felt like we needed. So I'm going to obey God today. You know, we've had a great couple of weeks. Christine and I were able to get away with our family, and, and we had a good time. We went to Nashville last weekend, and, and we went to an ice experience. Anybody ever been to one of those ice experiences? Anybody? Let me just tell you, it's cold. Well, you're like, duh, it's ice. No, it's colder than ice. It's, it is so cold, I thought the eyelashes were going to freeze on my, uh, on my face, and it was so cold, I have never felt so bald in my life. But it was a great time. But here's the problem with the getaway. Every time we stopped to eat, I said, oh, well, I'll fix it after the first of the year. So I had what I wanted. Every time, I had a good dessert with it almost. And if I didn't have a dessert with the meal, I sought out a dessert later. Can I get an amen? <laughs> and I had too much dessert. And so I kept saying, well, I'll change you with the first of the year. I'll change you with the first of the year. And the first of the year came, and then last night I had way too many desserts. My wife did not have to say amen so loudly. <laughs> it, well, let me just defend myself. I only got two. She ordered a third and then said I knew you wanted it, and I couldn't let it go to waste. <laughs> And then I grabbed another one on the way out the door. But anyways, <laughs> God has dealt with my heart about the need to reset. And the way we're going to do that is corporately in a fast. Now, I know what a lot of people say, and it's a great excuse. You know, a lot of people say to me, I don't believe in that mission stuff you do. We've got enough problems here at home. I say, it's great. Tell me what you're doing at home. Well, I am, well, well I just don't believe in that. Now, the reality is sometimes we say we don't believe something because we don't want to do something. And the truth is, a corporate fast is all throughout Scripture. There were whole gathering times and celebrations that they were called to fast. Time to give up certain things. Corporate fast is what saved Nineveh. They didn't only fast at themselves, but they made their children fast, and they made their, I mean, they made their, their fluffy, their dog fast. Could you imagine going up to your little rover and saying, Sorry, bro, no kibble today. You see, corporate fasts are all throughout the Scripture. What the Bible is saying when Jesus says, don't tell other people that you're fasting, he's not saying, don't, don't let people know you're fasting corporately. What he's saying is, don't start the Daniel fast today and then walk into work tomorrow and go, oh my gosh, you're going to have to put up with me. I've not had any coffee yet. That's what he's talking about. Or he's talking about going to a restaurant and looking at a menu, and when you want this, this, and this, and you're like, I wish I could have something to eat, but pastor called us to a fast. That's what he's talking about. Don't draw attention to the fact that you're trying to make a physical change. And so when we're talking about reset, we're going to be looking at that. What does it mean to have a reset? What does it mean to uh, uh, take a fast on? Somebody said, well, what kind of fast are we going to do? Some of you are marathon fasters. You can go juice for the next 21 days, and God bless your soul. Some of us are not. Some of us can do a Daniel fast. But what people mess up is the fact there's actually two Daniel fasts in the story of Daniel. The very first one is a very simple one. It says he didn't take the king's meat, he didn't take the king's delicacies, and he didn't take the king's wine. So what that one is translated is, is this, that for that period of time, he didn't eat any meat, any sweets, and he didn't have anything but water to drink. Now that's a basic Daniel fast. In the beginning, because watch this, one, the fast of consecration when he needed God to move. The other one, he was trying to move himself in line with God. So he said, I'll honor your dietary laws, and these are the things that I know are safe. And even in that one, like whole grain breads are allowed. But if you get to the consecration fast, in the end, it gives more detail. And so then you cut out all of your breads and those kind of things and add that to it. And I, there's actually, I can help you after service with even more details on that. Some of us like to find something in between those two. 
And the reason I'm sharing this with you now is I want to ask you to make a reset, and it's going to be involving your body. And the best way to do that is to join in some kind of a change here in the beginning of the year. You know, it's that time of year when we're really thinking about change anyways. The Washington Post actually shared the number one changes or what we call resolutions for people. Here, we're, here they are. And it was actually so funny. I gave one of these in the uh, earlier service and I coughed by, you know, non-intentionally coughed with one of them. See if you can figure out which one it was. The number one resolutions. Get fit. No cough yet. <laughs> Save money. Eat better. More family time. Am I hitting anybody's resolutions? Quit smoking. And I went, <laughs> totally unintentionally, last service rolled, okay? And then the biggest of all, lose weight. Now, I think that many of us have had these, or maybe we should have some of these resolutions. But the truth is, to have these resolutions, they're going to require a reset. And that's what I want to talk to you about briefly today. A reset is not a resolution, but it's a reset. The idea is like you have a phone or computer that is having some issues, so what do you do? You cut it off so that it allows it to reset. You disconnect it from the outlet, you disconnect it from the power source so that it can then reset itself and come back to it a proper operation. So what we're going to be doing over the next few weeks is we're asking you to make some physical changes in your life to cause a reset. Because a reset is a fresh start and a fresh look at what you have in front of you. It's taking time, stepping back, and saying, okay, I need to do something in my physical life that's going to help me in my whole life. Okay? Now, you're used to me dealing with you about your spiritual life here, but I'm going to show you today that your spiritual life in many ways mirrors your physical life because what you really need is a physical reset. Now, the other evening, I came home, and I turned the TV on, and it didn't come on. It did nothing. And so I thought, oh my goodness, what has happened to our TV? So I got up, and I'm trying, and I'm pushing every button I can think to push, and I'm asking, who broke my TV? Does that sound like anybody else? I don't know. And so as I'm pushing all these buttons around, trying to figure out what's going on, I realize, well, the only option I have at this moment is to, is to unplug the TV. So that sounds simple if you're small. But the TV was plugged in into a place that was behind a very hard-to-get-to spot, behind a very large piece of furniture. And in order to reset the TV, which did not help, by the way, but to reset the TV, I had to go somewhere that, trust me, by the looks of it, nobody's been for a very long time. And to go back there required me, listen to me carefully, it required me to have a reason to go back there, a why. You see, all true resets need a clearly identifiable why. Why am I going to reset this? Why was I back there? I wanted to see if it was able to be fixed with a reset. A reset starts with the right why. Here's our why for the year. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 19 reads like this. Or do you not know that your what? body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own. Stop there for just a moment. I want you to hear me. He's saying, look, guys, don't you understand that inside of your body, is the power and the presence of God. And then he takes it further. He says, for you were bought with or at a price, therefore glorify God in your spirit. No, not just your spirit, but in your body and in your spirit. Wow, because they're both God's. They both belong to God. I have to warn you the problem is at least one of them is trying to become a god you see paul is speaking here to a group of believers who understand the holiness of the temple 
that you only did certain things in the temple, that you considered it sacred, that you only uh, you valued it above other places. There was common and then there was holy. There was the kadash, the set aside. In my home, there's a group of cups that, that we get from different gas stations or different restaurants that give you, you know, take-home cups. It's brilliant advertising. Those cups, I can see those on the floor. I can say, bring them out of your rooms, but they are, that's what they are. They are just common, everyday cups. But across from there, not in the kitchen, but over across the way in the dining area, there's this cabinet, and in this cabinet are some cups that are set aside as holy, not unto God, but unto Christina. <laughs> we only pull those out when she pulls those out, when she gives us permission to use them. And then in fear when we're through, we carefully walk them over toward the sink. Can I get an amen from anybody who understands? Because they are set aside for whatever purpose she wants them set aside for. Now with that in mind, the Bible is saying here that God gave the people a temple in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, he called you his temple. He took you as his temple. And what he wants you to do is to honor him in the temple that he desires. And the temple that he desires is you. He wants to live inside of you. For when Jesus comes and saves our soul, God moves inside of us and makes us his dwelling place. He said, if you live in me and I live in you, then you can ask what you want. But here's the problem. Most of us have not treated our lives like a place for God to live, like a home or a temple for God. We've, treat, or we've treated our lives like a hotel for God. He can check in and then we check him out when we leave God's house. We check him in when we need a miracle, but then we check him out when his word is inter interfering with what we want to do. Amen. Can I just say, I better say it for myself, that's good preaching right there. We treat God like we're a hotel, we're like, okay, I don't need you now, I'll call you the next time I have a free weekend for you, Jesus. Oh, I better move on. You see, you have to understand that our bodies are not like hotels. He resides within us all the time, in every moment. He is working in us and through us, and He never leaves us. And just like the temple, the body is a place of worship, but it can never become the object of our worship. When you come into this building, we, this is a place we worship, but we don't worship this place. We collectively come to worship. We clean it, we treat it right, but it is not the object of our worship. When we start talking about our bodies and getting our bodies in shape, if you are not careful, your body can become the object of worship. Amen. Can I give you a good example? Go to the local gym. Now, not right now because there's more people there than normal. But go to the local gym. When you go in, there are mirrors everywhere. So you can see yourself from every kind of angle. The gym is probably the most anonymous place of all. You can be in there working yourself out. Nobody will know you in there because they're too busy looking at themselves. Not against going to the gym. I went to the gym one time. <laughs> I checked in at the gym. I don't understand some of you. I just checked in. I was there seeing a friend. I checked in. And it just comment after comment after comment. After, We're so proud of you, Pastor. We've been praying for you. You can do it, Pastor. I'm like, I just stopped by for a visit. But hey, if I had said I'm at a hot dog eating contest, y'all would have been like, help him, Jesus. Come on now. Amen. <laughs> Where, how did I get there? <laughs> because here's the problem. Whether it's working out and measuring your bicep, or it's feeding every craving you have. If you're not careful, your body will stop being your temple and become your God. I'm preaching truth. It's where we live. You see, our physical goals need to line up with who we are spiritually as well. Our knees sh shouldn't just hurt because we've been out running or climbing or hiking. Our knees should also hurt because we've been on our knees before the face of God. Our stomach shouldn't just hurt because we finally did, what do they call those things, crunches? <laughs> Is that what they call them? <laughs> Sit-ups. <laughs> For me, it's like rollovers. But anyways, come on, amen. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. 
We shouldn't be just doing that, but our guts ought to be sore because we feel like we're getting kicked in the gut because our neighbors and friends are on their way to hell. There has to be a balance. And the balance is realizing that God wants you not only in your spirit, but he also wants you in your flesh. Verse 20 kind of sums it up this way. He said, honor God with your body. The word for honor here is actually the place we get the word doxology. Okay? So literally this could be translated like this. It could literally mean that your body should bring glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning and is now and forever more shall be. That your body can be conducted in such a way that when people see you, it brings glory to your Father. I had a young man at the radio station the other evening and I texted his parents and I said, your son and the way he is conducting himself is bringing honor unto you. It's very much the same. The way that we conduct ourselves in our flesh should bring honor unto our Father. You see, when God calls us to live life to the fullness, He is telling us to bring the body and the spirit to Him. How much does God value the body? Can I tell you what we just celebrated at Christmas time? That He came to dwell among us and that He was incarnate. That means that Jesus Himself became flesh. That's how much value He puts on the flesh. Jesus himself came and he calls us to do the same, to value the flesh, to embrace him both fully in the spirit and to embrace him fully in the flesh. And here's how you're going to do that. Romans chapter 12, verse number one. Here we go. I'm trying to hurry here, but listen to me. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, kadosh, holy, set aside, not common, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is that good and what is acceptable and perfect will of God. You see, as you're starting this year out, instead of just saying, well, I need to do this and I need to do that, why don't you make a determination you're going to reset yourself physically? And in your physical body, you're going to make some changes that are going to cause a transformation in your life. Let me just tell you, if you make the right physical transformation changes in this beginning right now, by the end of this year, some of you will be saying, Pastor, I want to spend some time with you to say thank you. Transformation comes, listen to me carefully, through the renewing of your minds. It comes when your minds begin to change. And in this verse, number one, it tells us that proper worship is when we begin to live realizing my physical body must bring glory to God. Because the offering of the body is not an offering of bodily looks, but an offering of bodily behavior. That I begin to do what God has called me to do. It's not the way I look, it's how I act. And it's how I honor God in my body. Do you know the problem is? An Old Testament sacrifice was much easier to bring. Because an Old Testament sacrifice, the sacrifice was dead. When you laid it on the altar, it stayed on the altar. Do you know the difference with a living sacrifice? The altar's not fun. And the altar is a place of change. And we keep trying to climb off the altar. God's wanting to do something in us, and we're going, oh, but I want to go back to that old way. God says, no, 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 you're not going to act the way you acted in 2018. You're going, but God, I want to be that person. And he said, put yourself back on that altar. Bring yourself. You promised me on the beginning of this year that you were going to honor me with your heart and with your soul and with your might, all that you are. So that includes your body. Tie yourself back up. Put yourself back on that altar and sacrifice your will to my will and see what God can do in your life is what he's saying to us. Because a living sacrifice is sacrificed over and over numerous times in a day I might want to go back but I remember that greater is he that's in me so I get back up there and say God let me glorify you I don't have to lose my temper the way I used to I don't have to act the way that I used to act I now will honor you in my body as well I'm preaching truth to you today I want you to get this don't think about how to look better Or even how to lose weight. That's not why we're fasting. Think about how you're worshiping God by the way you're living. Is it a living sacrifice? So in closing today, I'm going to give you just a couple of quick questions that I want you to answer. If you want to be a living sacrifice, get ready. Here they come. I want you to write some of these down. 
The first is, what do you need to clean up? What do you need to clean up in your body? What do you need to clean up? 2 Corinthians chapter number 7, verse number 1 says this, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh, clean yourself up from all the sin in the flesh and the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So let me just ask you, how are you going to clean up your flesh? This is how you clean up your flesh. You cleanse your body by controlling your intake. So my question then would be, what are you eating? What are you drinking? What are you listening to? What are you looking at? What area needs pruning? Because we've been putting the wrong stuff inside of who we are. God can change your life if you let him. My second question, I'm hurrying, is what do you need to surrender? What do you need to surrender? See, a living sacrifice is a surrendered life. A living sacrifice means that you have surrendered everything about yourself to a God who meets you where you are. And instead of trying to become perfect, you bring yourself to God just as you are and you surrender to Him. Because we might need to stop trying so hard and start surrendering, letting go of it drawing close to God to stop failing and starting over again and failing and starting over again and start surrendering say God I can't beat this problem on my own but through Christ I can do all things and here's the thing we have so quickly focus on the all things instead of where it says through Christ here's the last one I'm going to give it to you and I'll be done what are you pursuing what are you pursuing? See, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 22 says this. Flee evil, pursue righteousness. Flee evil. The word flee there, it really doesn't mean just walk away from. It means fight for your life to get out of there. Flee evil. But as radically as you're fighting for your life to get out of there, the word for pursue there means fight with all of you who you are to get there you see I have to flee sin with everything in me but the way that I'm going to I can't just keep running from something I've got to start running towards something and instead of running from something all day long I want to start running toward God and when you start running toward God this is what God said to me you'll either go after what your sin or you'll go after your destiny you cannot pursue both at the same time you will either run after your destiny in Christ or you will follow the sin of the world you must make up your mind flee that pursue this and you'll find that God has something in store for you that you couldn't do on your own this year amen last question stand with me stand with me last question here we go how are you offering your body a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God I, I just I just feel like I need to share this deep spiritual truth that some of you need right now you ready for this let me show you how you can make your body a living sacrifice. Ready for this? Like in your marriage. Ready? This is, this is deep. Watch right here. Did you see what I did? I bit my lip. Sometimes you just got to bite your lip and sacrifice your right to reply. No matter how wrong they are. What I'm doing at that moment is I'm making a physical change that will invoke in a relational change. I'm trying to invite you to make a physical change that will invoke a new relational change with your Heavenly Father. That when you begin to stop pulling that garbage that's chased you your whole life, you break that addiction, you break those connections, you break that sin, and you leave it in 2018, and you start out 2019 and say, you know what, it might simply be a, 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 a Daniel Pastor. It might be something where we're corporately making a change in our body, but every time I go to do that, I remember I have promised God something else, and because I have promised God something else, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to eat that. I'm not going to touch that. And the next time that sin comes to your mind, you say, you know what, I promised God I was going to honor him this year, and I'm not going to touch that, and I'm not going to bring that into my life anymore. And everything changes because you become a physical Christian. 
not just a spiritual Christian. You better bow your heads while I preach all day. Can I get an amen? amen. You all just said amen that I would preach all day. Amen. Heavenly Father, we want to make a change this year. And Lord, we want to be able to go where you want us to do and do the work you want us to do. And we don't want our flesh to be so, so broken or so out of shape or, or so addicted or, or so bound or so enslaved to debt that we can't do that. God, help us to line up our physical life in such a way that it will honor you. So that both in our spirit and our flesh, we bring glory unto God. Every head bowed, every eye closed for just a moment. If you're here today and you say, Pastor, I know exactly what needs to come out of my life. I know exactly what I brought over, I've already carried over, and God's wanting to deal with it in my physical being so that I can glorify God and I'm ready to repent for that. Can I see your hand if that's you? Wow, the majority of people in this room put those down. Some people are getting ready. I watched last night, I couldn't sleep, and I watched Unbroken the story, the, the Christian uh, continuation of that movie. And it showed that when Zeffirelli got saved, he went home and he pulled every ounce of hidden sin out of the house and poured it down the drain. That's what I'm talking to you about. Go home, pull all the hidden sin out of the house, pour it down the drain, and your spirit man and your physical man will begin to line up and then you're going to find you're in a better place because you've had a reset. Until you're willing to cast it away, you're not hearing me. I am preaching what I know God wanted me to. I was going a whole other direction, and I was already running that way when God brought me to this message for this day. Let me ask you one more question. Maybe some of you say, today, Pastor, I came to God's house, and I need a reset, not just in the physical, but in every area of my life. I've never given my life to Jesus Christ. I don't want to start this year without asking. And you're here today, and you say, Pastor, I am ready for a complete reset. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. This first Sunday, 2019, is going to be my spiritual birthday as I surrender my life to Christ. If that's you, can I see your hand in this place? I want to pray with you. Is there anyone at all? This is your moment. This is your time. Thank you. Some recommitting their lives to Christ or are there others. In Jesus' name, thank you, thank you, thank you. Join hands with someone near you if you would. Numerous have raised their hand now at this point in the service. Let's believe God with them. The Bible says that if I confess the Lord Jesus Christ with my mouth and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, he is my Lord and he is alive, then I start a new life with God as his child. Let's pray together. All of you pray with me. Jesus, by faith, I believe your promises. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner in need of a Savior. In Jesus' name, I repent of my sins, and by faith, I receive your grace. Now, I believe Jesus came for me, he died for me, and now he lives forevermore. From this moment forward, God is my Father, heaven is my home, Jesus is my Savior. Amen and amen. Now, come on, give God a praise in this place. Father, as we're praising you, I thank you you're setting everybody free. Those who said they have an area they want to surrender, I thank you, God, as they surrender it, your power and your Holy Spirit is going to work inside of their bodies, and they shall be new by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen.